If you're doing this, stalling your rotation going through impact, but you want to be a little bit more like this, nice, smooth, effortless rotation through the golf ball, well, all we need to do to get there is to find out the reason why you're stalling through impact. So we're going to get into five reasons in this video for the root causes of why you could be stalling going through impact and a fix for each of those reasons. And once you fix your reason, you'll finally be able to get that nice smooth rotation through the golf ball like you want. So the first reason, your posture is way too bent over. So this is something I always see for players, is they'll be setting up to the golf ball like this with far too much hip hinge to where their armpits and their upper body in general is massively in front of their lower body. So from here, ultimately the upper body, like we said, is displaced in front of me. So as I start to turn up to the top of my swing, most players here will start to move the pelvis slightly underneath them to get the upper body more on top of the lower body. But even if you don't do that and you keep the upper body really flexed, really bent over, your weight is gonna fire onto your toes because wherever your upper body is going, your weight is going to go into your feet. And then from there, you're not gonna be able to turn because the club will fly out in front of the ball line and then you would shank it if you did turn. But this is where then we will see players normally back up massively to be able to hit that shot. If you are really bent over, you have to go back and up, which will mean you are stalling out your rotation. Just like imagine you're on a tightrope, for example, there's a canyon underneath you, and you start to go forward with your upper body, what are you gonna do to rebalance yourself? You're gonna go straight back. You're gonna rock back and forth. That's exactly what happens with a golf swing. That will stall out any effort to rotate. So what we wanna do to fix it, quite simply, just this. You want to have your armpits over the balls of your feet. That's what you want. You want to set up with those armpits just over them. Now, the way to get there pretty much every single time is doing this setup procedure. So, if you stand dead straight up, slight little bend in the knees, but bolt upright with your upper body, and then grip the club to where it's right in front of you like so. Then I want you to get this club behind the golf ball via just relaxing your upper body, so your mid-back and your upper back. Just like that. So now, if you feel like you're a little bit too close, just take a little shuffle back if you've got long arms like me. But then, look at my armpits now. They're over the balls of the feet. That is in the good posture. So, slight bend of the knees, club in front of you, dead straight back, and then just relax upper back, mid back to the club, hits the ground. So now, that enables me to, as I turn back, the weight's gonna be nicely distributed in my feet. I'm gonna be able to get that weight going back into that trail heel. And then from there, because my upper body and lower body haven't done anything to, let's say, make up for that bad posture. They've nicely just turned and stayed in tilt. Now I can turn the downswing and my posture that I've had it set up won't negatively affect me. So now I can just turn up, turn through, get that good posture and continue to turn without any funny business happening. So number two, your club face is either too open or too closed. So either one of those sides of the spectrum can cause you to stall out your rotation. So let's talk about open club face first. So if my club face is getting open, so where the toe is either pointing up towards the sky, let's say in the early swing, or even more so pointing behind, that's some crazy open, and that stays open, for example, in my swing, I can't now turn through the golf ball, because if I turn through the golf ball and don't stall out my rotation, the club face is just gonna be pointing hugely right. Of course, what our subconscious always knows when we're playing golf is we wanna hit the ball to where we're aiming, to our target that we're intending to hit it to. So that is not gonna get you to hit the ball to the target. What will, will be stalling out your rotation and having a big flip of the hand, so it could be after an excessive roll release or an early release to square the club up. So open club face will not, absolutely will not get you turning through the golf ball. You have to fix that if you want to have nice stable rotation with the ball. So a closed club face, let's say with a, let's say club face here is pointing directly at the ground, that will also get you to stall your rotation. So a lot of players believe to get more rotation, you need to shut the face off. You just need the club face to be square to the arc, but we'll get to that. So with a really closed club face, how is that gonna stall you out? So if again, I'm closed here in the early swing, club face pointed to the ground and it stays closed. If I try to turn to what a normal human being can do in rotation, going through the golf ball, my club face is gonna be pointing still too far left. So that's where no amount of Dustin Johnson level rotation, that won't be achievable for pretty much all of you, will get you to be able to square that club up unless you've got his club head speed also. So that's where for closed club face players on tour, do not try to copy them. It will be a disaster unless you're athletically gifted, but you would probably be on tour if that was you. So what the body will try to do, it will try to, okay, get the ball to go to target. How is it gonna do that? It's gonna do that via backing the upper body up, shooting the pelvis forward, 
having the upper body back back, what's that going to do? That's going to get the hands to raise, because obviously when my upper body goes up, the hands will go up also. What does raising the hands do? It opens up the club face. So for a really close club face, it will get it to square, and then you will hit the ball more often to target. You'll have a nasty hook, sometimes even a push in there, even with a closed club face. So that's where not a good thing to do. What we want to do, of course, to get that rotation nicely moving through, just have a square face. So a square club face, having the club face square to the swing arc. So a square club face does not mean square to target, like say in the golf swing, it means just square to the arc we're swinging around. So the club face is tracing that arc. So that means that shaft parallel in the early swing here, it's slightly toed down, only very slightly. So it's not toe up like it used to be, it is slightly toed down, that's square to the arc. So then I can just continue to turn and I don't have to do anything to be able to re-square that face. It is just gonna nicely follow the arc. Brilliant. So for the fix for this, could be a number of different reasons. It could be your grip, could be too weak, too strong, depending on what your club face issue is. It could be your wrist angles, too bowed or too cupped. Could be your grip isn't matched up with your wrist angles, for example. It could be loads of different things. It could even be how you're moving in the takeaway with your forearms. It could even be, like we said, purely just posture. It could be loads of things in there. So that's why we can't get into all those reasons from here, but we can get into a great drill to do just to make sure that club face is square. So. Rule of thumb here, let's just assume you've got a standard grip. So two and a half knuckles in the left hand and the right hand there, the line between the thumb and the meat of the hand going towards kind of right, right armpit area. Let's assume that. So if we then get a good takeaway and we don't do anything else funky throughout the swing, we'll be absolutely fine. So good grip, then we get shaft parallel to the ground and I want that toe slightly down, just very slightly, just like you can see here. It's matching my spine angle, the club face is. So if I can get to that position and I stop, club face is square, good, and then swing up, swing through, boom. That is gonna be way easier for me to nicely rotate through the golf ball nice and smooth. So number three, extremely common, and this is a player who is stalling out. They will most likely be having their pelvis slightly work towards the golf ball in the backswing, which then leads them to then work the pelvis more towards the ball in the downswing. That will stall out your rotation. That will make you flip. If you start moving that pelvis even slightly towards the ball, you are putting on the brakes for rotation. You are slowing it down to the point where it completely stops. It happens for everyone who does that. Because even if you don't, let's say your pelvis moves forward but you continue to turn, the club's now on the outside of the ball line, you're gonna shank it. So why rotation stops when the pelvis moves forward it is again to save the shot. It will help when your rotation slows down for the hand path to drop to counteract the forward movement they're having from the pelvis pushing them forward. And then that will get you to hit the ball somewhat solidly. So again, we don't want the pelvis working forward. This is so common. It's so minor and slight of a movement as well, but has massive implications. So when you're looking at your golf swing, you're down practicing next, draw a red line right on the back of your pelvis. So your pelvis is touching it at setup. Let's say that is your red line. And then watch what your pelvis does in relationship to that line. As you start going up to the top of the swing, you want it to maintain let's say the touching with that line, or if not, break it a little bit, go a little bit past it. And then we do not want it, of course, going forward in the downswing, which could be a load of different reasons because that's early extension. I am actually just filmed a guide that I'm going to be putting on Skillist, a complete guide for early extension, which will be out very soon for you guys out there. But if we want to give ourselves the best chance to not have that pelvis drive forward and not stall out, we need the pelvis to be going back in that backswing and do our best to keep it back in the downswing. Because you can see, as soon as I keep that pelvis back and keep put the pushing that pelvis back, look what it does. Rotates me nicely through the golf ball. So those who watch the channel regularly, you've guessed it for the drill with this. Chair drill. So absolutely the best one for this because what does this represent? This almost represents that red line. What did we want to do with that red line? We wanted to keep in contact with it in the backswing. But doing this drill, that's not good enough. You want to push that right hip back. Get that hip to move deeper, which is going to encourage you to keep that pelvis back. So if I'm pushing this chair back in that backswing, I know my hips have gone back. I can feel them pushing the chair back. And then in the downswing, push it back straight away with that left hip. Continue to push it and push it and push it. Really push it, guys. Don't just try and push it a little bit. Give it as much of a push as you possibly can. So let's hit one here, pushing it back in the backswing and then pushing it back in the downswing. So backswing, right hip, downswing, left hip. So number three, steep shaft in the early downswing. So where the shaft gets vertical, it's like you're holding an umbrella over your head, which is something you always have to do here in England. So 
Absolutely. Why that will cause you to stall out your rotation, because if I have a steep shaft and I continue to rotate nicely, you can see a lot of not very good things happen. The club tumbles right out in front of me. My angle attack will be incredibly steep. It's going to be swipey. What is it not going to do? It's not going to hit the ball to where I'm intending to hit it to. So the body will react. What the body does to react to a very steep shaft is ultimately a couple things. It might early extend because that'll get that upper body to move backwards, which what happens to the golf club there? See how it shallows out? And then I'd have to, of course, stall that rotation and just fire the arms, extend that right arm into the golf ball because it will have that effect on the golf club to then somewhat try to hit the ball to target. It'll be very inconsistent, of course. Or my body, which this is gonna be one of the parts in a minute as well. If I early side bend a ton, what's that gonna do? to a steep shaft, it's going to reshallow it again, but that's going to stall out my rotation. That's going to make me very flippy. So not good at all. That's why, again, for shallowing the shaft, having that center of mass of the golf club right here. So that balancing point on the club, there we go. So right where it balances on your finger, that is the center of mass of that golf club. We want that to pitch behind in the downswing. Doesn't need to be crazy like a Matthew Wolf. Just needs to be a little bit, just needs to shallow out a little bit. So then that encourages you to turn and then steal with that rotation, present that golf club to the golf ball with good launch conditions so you can hit the ball to your target. It's crucial to be able to rotate smoothly is a shallower shaft. It doesn't need to be crazy shallow. It just needs to be a little bit shallow. So there could be so many reasons to why you steepen the shaft. There's so many reasons. That's why, I, again, I have a whole course on this on Skillist. So that's where there's a link in the description to all my courses on skillist.com. You'll see all my coaching profile and you'll find the complete guide to shallowing the golf club in the downswing. It gives, again, all the root cause reasons, as there's loads of them, of why you could be steepening the shaft. So again, this video would probably be hours long if I got into all of them, but we could make it very nice and simple here. So this drill will absolutely get you feeling a shallow shaft. So I just have an alignment stick, place it up the left-hand side of the golf club, just like so. And then what I want you to do, get up to the top of your swing. You'll have that stick point roughly behind you. And then from there, just feel like that stick is pointing in front of you. Because if you're steepening, where's it going? It's pointed towards the ground. We want it pointing in front and then just continue to rotate. You can, let's say, pause at the top and hit some balls with that which is quite difficult to be honest, I'll give one a go, or you can just do it practice swing. So all I want is to get it pointed in front and turn. So I'm gonna pause at the top and then do that. There we go. It's great for rotation, of course, as well through the golf ball, which is what we're watching this video for. Because if I stall out my rotation, my arms are gonna to start to fire. It's gonna smack into my side before impact. Now, word of warning, it will smack into your side after impact because you will get to a point where your hands and arms will naturally start to turn over and then you will start to hit yourself. But that'll be way after impact, you will feel that. So that's where getting it up to the top, pointing it in front, turning through, even just practice swing wise is extremely beneficial. So that'd be a good one. So number five, we mentioned it a little bit on the steep shaft and that is you are trail side bending too early in a downswing. So, so many players are trying to shallow the shaft, for example, by dropping the right shoulder down immediately. Right shoulder absolutely drops down in a downswing, but it doesn't happen from the start. If it happens from the start, what that's gonna happen is your upper body is gonna fall massively behind your lower body. So your tilt will also be extremely compromised. And from there, there isn't much chance you can turn and rotate. This is where a lot of players run into the myth that rotation hurts your body. So that's where, of course, if you still manage to rotate and you've had this big early trail side bend there, that really does hurt even just doing it like this, all the tension in my lower back, not good at all. So that's where, yes, we want trail side bend, but we want it to happen, especially with irons, add around sharp parallel to the ground into the golf ball, that gap between right shoulder and right hip gets minimized, gets squashed down. But driver happens a little bit earlier, happens from left arm parallel to shaft parallel. That's via more left side extension that helps the club propel more up. So good little drill to do for this, for these players. One that I really quite like, I've done a ton myself. I haven't really talked about it much on the channel either. Is you set up to the golf ball and what you do, you drop your right foot back. So a ton like that, really drop it back to where it's just the toes are on the ground, the heels elevated. Because then you can't put pressure, which your upper body would create 
if you really get into that, let's say, right side bended position. So if you really come here, that's not gonna feel good on your foot leg there, that's just on the toes. So that will most likely plant the heel back down. So it'll stop you from doing that movement. It'll make you a little bit more stacked on top. You can still side bend going through the golf ball because you'll already be at the point of that right foot banking by then. All your pressure will be in that left side. So right foot back, that's gonna keep you a little bit more stacked with that right side and you can still get that right side going through the golf ball and give it a good hit. I love this for chest rotation as well. Really forces you to get that chest turning through. So as you can see here, there are a bunch of reasons to why you are stalling out. And let's just discuss the elephant in the room, which is flexibility. So many golfers will be clicking on this and thinking, how on earth has he not talked about flexibility yet? That's what everyone tells me, why I can't rotate, because I'm not flexible. Absolutely everyone who's ever come for lessons who have said that they can't rotate, because of a lack of flexibility, every single one of them have had something wrong with their golf swing. Once we fix that, everyone starts to rotate better. Flexibility does play a role in how open and rotated you can get. Absolutely does. But that's not what stalling out really is. Stalling out is your rotation slowing down to a halt. You could get massively open early and then stall out. So that's where this is the rate of rotation. We want the speed of rotation to remain constant. So how open you can get has no bearing on this issue. So that's why it's the speed of the turn. That's why someone like say like Francesco Molinari has very minimal rotation going through the golf ball. He doesn't get all that open, but his rotational speed stays constant. And someone like Dustin Johnson gets crazy open, but what's he also do? His rate of rotation stays constant. So that's why flexibility doesn't have a massive role in this but it plays a part in how open you can get. And I can say for even myself that it does not play a massive role because my flexibility is terrible because I'm disabled. I have cerebral palsy that affects my left side. So I have a big problem there, which in the past when I was struggling with my rotation, working on it, I thought that it was because of my flexibility. It wasn't, it was because I had poor positions in my golf swing and immediately I started to rotate better afterwards. So. Absolutely. Look at your swing first before you make those assumptions. Otherwise, you could be selling yourself massively short. If you enjoyed the video, click that like button. If you want more golf instruction just like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video.